Buongiorno, buonasera, benvenuti amici, welcome my friends, my name is Vincenzo and welcome to my channel Fountain Pen Therapy. I'm really excited folks, this is the, another weekly recap. Um, as of April 20th, 2024, I got some news for you, some trends, some spotlights, all kinds of information. I know you guys like it uh, and it's well appreciated, it's getting a good reception not getting the likes that i would love um not the likes the views that i would like but you know it's an hour an hour and 20 minute show not everybody has the time to do it but please if you're just joining us for the first time i have timestamps. check the timestamps. look at what interests you you can skip what doesn't that way you don't have to sit around for an hour and a half this type of show, obviously, I repeat, but it's meant to replace the live shows, and usually live shows are pretty lengthy. Uh, without, you know, without the the shout outs to the people that are there, unfortunately, I prefer to get as much information in. So, you know, get a beverage. I'm doing the same. I've got my cappuccino. Sit back, enjoy. I'm going to try to make it as entertaining as possible, and at the same time, provide you with some information. Another novelty is that I've got different angles going here now. I've, I've got different camera angles that I'm going to try to use for the first time. So, for example, I've got my camera here that I can look at and maybe even close-ups for some of the products. I then have uh, my uh, main camera, which is right there. And, of course, I'm going to have my um, overhead camera, which is right here so you can see show you some of the products firsthand and then i'm going to have as well um, uh, when i need it reference to my uh, internet when needed so there you have it now let me just make sure i'm going to the right place here we go so stay tuned i think i'm going to try to make it more dynamic if you will and let's get started so what's the first subject to deal with well what kind of new pens would i that i've seen or uh, have just come up and that i would recommend well there's a couple here so let me right away get to the go to my um uh internet feed yeah here we go so the first one is this uh, what is it referred to as the leonardo momento zero grande 2.0 universe gold pen isn't this amazing folks this is really tempting me it's 241 or 242 dollars um or euros so that's roughly 241 maybe a little bit less or uh, just slightly more in u.s um in canadian it's almost 1.5 percent so it's almost 50 percent more it's in the 300 dollar mark so it certainly doesn't meet my 200 dollar threshold but this pen is absolutely gorgeous take a look at it you're looking at casa delle de la stilo grafica but it's, it's i think it's available on other sites really really like this pen next what have i got on pen chalet i see this mayora ultra ogiva or ogiva golden age 2.0 this is the steel nib version at 220 dollars us folks take a look at that nib i mean it's just beautiful um, I would really recommend it. I got to tell you, very, I mean, those nibs look so delicious. I know there is a version of this pen with titanium nibs that's going for about 350, 350 euros, so a little more expensive. Just in case you want something a little more elaborate, it is available. So that's the Mayora Ogiva 2.0. What have I got next for you? Oh, yes. This is more in line, I would say, with uh, the $200 uh, limit that I've kind of imposed on myself. It's a Mayora Elaria exclusive pen chalet at 124 US. Take a look at this video. Show you the video because just the pictures don't give uh, justice to the pen the pen the pictures show the kind of flat resin which is not the case take a look at that chateauancy it's a big pen and um 
If you're thinking about getting a Mayora pen or an Alaria version, which is one of their more least expensive, with just look at that, look at that really deep, deep, deep resin at 124. Guys, I think I'm gonna pull the trigger on this one. Very, very nice. It's a beautiful pen. Again, I, I can't say enough about Joya pens. Very nice. So there you go. Okay, we'll stop the video. You get the idea. I, I just love it. I love that pen. So I would not hesitate to get it. What have I got for you next? Well, if we go to the um, Goulet site. Now, I got to tell you, I was going to boycott Goulet pens from now on because they've decided not to, to no longer sell in Quebec, which is the province, the Canadian province I live in, which is really unfortunate. I can't, I can't understand why. It may have something to do with our language laws, etc. I have no idea. Be nice if Goulet explained that to us. I've written to them. No comment. Uh, no, no, no response whatsoever, which is unfortunate. But you know, it's not fair. It's not because I don't can't buy from it. It doesn't mean that all of you folks, especially you Americans, have access to Goulet. So I've decided that I would not do that. And for those beginners who are watching, take a look at this cleaning and tuning sale set. Uh, it's got a set for there. I know Anderson Pens got something similar going on their site as well. But I figured you've got everything you need there uh, to, to clean and tune pens. So that's interesting. In their new arrivals... What I wanted to mention, and I know that Drew uh, did a um, did a video on uh, you know the five German pens that Goulet Pen offers, or some of their better offerings, and they talk about this new um, entry, which is the Diplomat Traveler Fountain Pen. Take a look at that video because he comments on the nib that's on this Diplomat Pen, and that's the reason why. Uh, I'm giving it a, a, you know, I'm shouting out on, on this pen. It normally, you know, it's it's a $92 offering, so very reasonably priced. It is Diplomat. It's a German pen. It has a number five Yowo nib, but apparently, according to Drew, it's got some, some, real, some real spring to it, which is unusual for a Yowo number five, which is usually pretty stiff. So he, that could be something that interests you. Take a look at Drew's um, Goulet pen uh, video this week. He, he elaborates a little more. So there you have it. Next, what have I got for you? Well, I um, you'll recall that I'm still waiting for Pen Chalet to send me the Endless Alchemy inks. I'm really looking forward to it. Finally, they arrived. I wrote to them and apparently the blue ink forget what it's called is still in back order they want they asked me whether or not i wanted to uh, cancel etc i said no look i'm not going to get the alchemy inks without the blue blue is a is for me one of my go-to inks colors anyway so i'm going to be patient and i hope you're patient when i get them you'll be the first one i'm going to do a full review on those inks find the bottles really interesting so there you have it what else have I got for you? I've got on Pen Chalet, uh, there are these uh, Van Diemen's Ink Greek Heroes, some interesting colors there that you should take a look at. I, I also think there's a Sailor, uh, the Sailor Manu inks that I've shown to you before, uh, fifth anniversary series, 50 milliliter fountain pen ink bottles that are also very interesting. So that's that. What else have I got for you? Well, in terms of paper, as you know, I'm a great fan of keeping you informed about any paper, notebooks, journal products. Uh, today we're going to do a, we're going to take a look at that um, um, onion skin journal that I pr recently purchased and that I mentioned to you last week. We're going to do some of my new uh, some of my ink sampling on that on that journal. So stay tuned for that. But what I did want to mention to you is a outfit baz notebooks this is available on etsy and they it, i think it's an italian company it comes from yeah bologna italy 
and just realize that it has all kinds of offerings on Tomo River notebooks. Uh, I think they're all, unfortunately, all um, um, like blank paper uh, or or plain paper without without any lines. But that's okay. You know, they're offering like, for example, this three hundred dollar uh, no frills. Uh, notebook Tomo River A5 size 300 pages at $19 transportation may be uh, expensive but depending on where you live uh, this may be a very nice alternative they've got all kinds of offerings with all kinds of uh, covers I think this is very interesting they also got here not only Tomo River but they also got if I'm not mistaken uh, Fabiano, uh, Fabriano uh, covers, uh, Varese covers, so all kinds of interesting notebook products. Take a look at that, and I'll have the you know the exact the exact um, uh, reference in my description below. So, but I thought that was uh, worthy of mention. So that's we've done inks, we've done paper, we've done pens. I've got more pens that I'd like to. Uh, um, I've got more pens that I want to take a look at with you, but we'll do that in my uh, fountain pen therapy spotlight section in just a few minutes. Okay, what have I else got for you? Well, the next the next uh, uh, section of this recap is to recap for you some of the more enjoyable YouTube uh, uh, videos. So uh, we'll go to my to my next camera uh, if you will to there we go um, so we've got one goulet pens now like i mentioned i wanted to boycott but i'm going to mention them anyway even though they're no they've decided to no longer sell in quebec which is really unfortunate but in their weekly episode both um, uh, mr goulet and drew uh, review a couple of pens they have a couple of comments like they usually do but they have a very interesting section on um, uh, you know they answer a question about what they what do they think about inspired by pens or knockoffs and I think it, everybody should take a look at this uh, comment on the especially on the part of Mr. Goulet himself he goes through what he thinks about knockoffs and you know and he has some very interesting comments to make comments that i've kind of shared with some of my viewers in some of the comments because every time we look at a pen that appears to be inspired by you know a major manufacturer or a major pen maker uh, it, it gets a lot of controversy and i think generally speaking we agree i agree with mr goulet what he says is first of all if it's a complete fake that's passing itself off as a Mont Blanc, for example. We even going as far as having Mont Blanc written on the pen and you know the famous logo, etc. Then it's a no-no, and I agree. Um, then there is the whole issue of patents, patents that are run off, that run out after 15, 20 years, and that they're no longer protected, if you will. Um, then there's an issue of passing off or uh, or you know confusion if the vendor is deliberately trying to pass himself off um, or pass off the pen or confuse the viewers letting them think that it's for example a Mont Blanc or any other pen you know well-established pen maker I think that's a no-no as well but then you get the inspired so for example, my Lemon M5 that I recently reviewed, it's got, yes, it's heavily inspired by one of the, by the Mont Blanc uh, William Shakespeare pen, but it doesn't have the William Shakespeare signature on the cap. It doesn't have the Mont Blanc logo. It has pandas. There, there, you know, there are several differences. So it's inspired, but it's not trying to pass itself off as something else. And, you know, we don't know when the patents run out on some of these pens. So, uh, you know, before we we make comments such as they're illegal, etc., be careful, okay? Uh, so I think it's a very interesting, very interesting uh, comments there. And, you know, if you're trying to, 
you can't afford the the big the big uh, expensive originals, if you will, and you want to get a sense or a feel of what they feel like. Uh, and you know, you're just starting out on the hobby, and you're not willing to, you know, uh, mortgage your home. Well, there you go. There may be some use to it. So very interesting comments there. Second thing is Penn Venture. He's got a really good video on, you know, Waterman inks. Um, oftentimes we're looking at all these fancy inks that have come out recently and Shimmer and Sheen and you've got lots of brands there and we kind of tend to forget the basic uh, staples like Waterman. And he goes through the, the Waterman inks and, he, you know, he describes them as very safe inks and I agree with them. There are inks that don't stain. There are inks that uh, wash out really quickly. They give you excellent performance, really well priced. So you know what? Uh, I've decided that maybe next week I'm going to take out my Waterman inks uh, that I've you know forgotten um, and uh, pull them out and start using them again. So thanks to Ben Venture for that. The next um, the next uh, reviewer that I'd like to shout out is Une Fontaine de Plume. Excellent. Um, this, this, it's a French reviewer that does some very, very nice reviews. Now, for those of you who speak French, I would recommend it. Um, uh, in those you don't, he's got, you know, the translation going on at the same time. But he's got a very, very unique, calm voice. He goes through... Uh, some very interesting pens of all kinds, of all price points. Excellent, excellent reviews. I thought I'd give a shout out to uh, Une Fontaine de Plume. So well recommended. My friend Shaq MD, well, a couple of things. As I had predicted last week, I, I said to you that I wouldn't be surprised if he goes out and get the rest of the 100th anniversary Mont Blanc pens. Well, he's done that. He's, the, he's reviewed the 146s this week. Uh, you're welcome to to see that video. Very interesting. Um, so good job, Shaq. The next one, of course, is my pal Hemingway Jones. His live show, as usual, very, very, very entertaining. If you didn't catch that live, he's got a recorded version. He's also done a video about his three. You know, if he if he um, uh, you know loses or gets rid of all the inks and he no longer has any inks and his collection is completely destroyed what three inks would he keep or what would you know the best in other words is three go-to inks he goes through that some very interesting comments so shout out to Hemingway Jones always entertaining then of course Doodlebud and Doodlebud uh, interesting video um, and, uh, you know, given that lately I've been going through a handwriting um, kind of uh, 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 experiment, trying to change my handwriting, and I, I think I've succeeded and I've improved it, gone through my own, my own ways of improving, and, you know, and he gives you seven tips on how to improve your handwriting, which I thought was very, very interesting. So shout out to Doodlebud as usual. Next on the list is Dan Williams. And what I find interesting about Dan Williams is that he makes reference to a site. And let me just go to my, cut out to my, yeah, he makes reference to this site, which is called Pen Sharing. Uh, and I don't think it, it, it offers this service to to Canadians. I think it's only available United Kingdom, USA, Belgium, Norway, and the Netherlands. I guess that's why these countries are there. I didn't read the fine print. But what's wonderful about this site is you can hire, which in other words, you can borrow a pen uh, and, you know, try it out. He borrows them, he borrows pens to kind of do reviews on them. Uh, but I think that's a very interesting and it's too bad they don't have um, offerings for Canada. But uh, there is a, a pen sharing site that I had never heard of before. And shout out to Dan Williams, who um, recently has hired a couple of pens and reviewed them. And it caught my attention. And I figured I'd share that with you. So there you have, there you have my YouTube reviews. 
Uh, and um, I think next what we'll do is uh, take a look at some of my pens. So uh, give me just a second. I will set up my cameras and we'll be right back. Okay, in my fountain pen uh, therapy spotlight, I got some, some, a couple of things to mention. First of all, it's confirmed I will be on Hemingway live show next Tuesday, April the 23rd. Um, I know that Hemingway Jones is going to be uh, publishing some some uh, some uh, thumbnails on YouTube to announce that. I'm really looking forward to it. We haven't really, I, I think we're going to kind of, you know, wing it. We're both very passionate uh, at what we do. So I think we can talk about anything at any time. I'm going to let him take the lead. It's his show. Um, if I got any questions for him, I've already kind of have a couple of ideas that I want to discuss with him. And we'll see if on the weekend he wants to uh, maybe review some questions or plant things. I, I think he, he he mentioned to me he wants two YouTubers, reviewers or pen collectors to kind of share their ideas, thoughts on all kinds of things. So we're going to be on for 15, 20 minutes and I really appreciate that. So stay tuned for that. Next thing I wanted to mention is there are a couple of pens on the Chinese pen front that I wanted to mention, some of which I've actually ordered. First thing, um, and you'll see that up on the screen, Majon A1 new 2024 pen retractable pens. Uh, I'm not a great fan of these A1s. I have, I think, one A1 and one A2. Just because they don't offer medium nibs, they're fine and extra fine nibs. I think they're a little too fine for me frankly, but they're excellent pens. And here you see on the screen, there's a, a series of other um, additional pens that Majon uh, has come out uh, for 2024. So that's um, one pen that you may be interested in that I have not ordered as yet. The next pen I'd like to mention is the Jinao 9013. You'll see that. I'll put it up on the screen. I frankly don't know what the what the difference is between 9013 9016 and 9019 i have i have ordered this one uh, i think the difference is in the nib this is probably a number six size heartbeat nib so it probably equivalent to the 9016 but with a different nib i think that's the difference i'm not sure when I get it, I own the 9016, I own the 9019. So you know what? We'll take a look at this 9013 as soon as I get it, do some comparisons, and I will let you know. But if you guys are interested in looking at it more deeply, again, you'll see all of this in my description. So references, you can take a look if you're interested. Next, what I'm putting up on the screen next is the Fuluwin 017 resin fountain pens. As you know, I've done a couple of reviews on my collection of the Fully Win 017. It's got different types of resins. Lately, two additional ones have been added. And now Fully Win has added uh, three more, I think. And it, I really like that, um, that uh, brown and blue version. I don't believe it's, it's uh, versions that I have already in my collection. I'm thinking about adding them. I'm not sure yet. I think I have other priorities before that. But for those of you who've never tried the Fully Win 017, take a look at that fine, fine pen, really fun resins. And those nibs are just medium nibs. They're smooth and they're a little bit like um, like Kegaloo nibs. So shout out to them. They're, they're uh, really nice. Next on the screen that I'm showing you is this Natami fountain pen. Now, Natami has come out with different, uh, kind of different version pen, but this one caught my eye. It, it appears to me that this is a different model, and I have ordered it. So as soon as this Natami gets, gets to me, you'll be the first to see it. I will review it. But again, if anybody's interested in looking at this pen more closely, you will have a reference in my description. And finally... Last but not least, the most interesting um, new um, offering from a Chinese pen maker is this Majon P139. And I think I'm going to show it up on the screen. Yeah, you'll see it up on the screen. Sorry about that. I just wanted to make sure you got it. On the screen is the Majon P139, folks. 
the P139. When I take a look at this, and I have a couple of, just a, a couple of photographs for you that appear on the screen while I'm talking to you about it, I think it's major news. When you look at this pen, you have both in the white resin or white plastic or acrylic, and then the orange. Uh, it, it can it kind of looks like a Dolce Vita or maybe even the Hemingway Mont Blanc or maybe the Maiora Mythos. Uh, it's a combination, but it's got a number eight size nib. I've ordered it. Um, take a look at it. It's on at AliExpress. As soon as I get it, you will be... Uh, I think this is a pen I'm looking forward to and looking forward to see how Majon um, uh, has finally come out with a number eight size nib and what that nib can do and whether I can swap it and what kind of a what kind of a unit it has, etc., etc. That's, I think, extremely interesting. So I'm looking forward to that. Now, let me go to my overhead camera right away because I got some pens. I want to show you the pen haul that I received this week, uh, some of which I think I will review and some of which I won't. Another Vazir pen. Take a look. I mean, Vazir just goes out of its way, you know. Um, comes in this very interesting box. You've seen this before with a beautiful kimono all the time. And it's just another very nice. I think this is the another version of the Meteor Shower. Um, I've reviewed another one, which was the green version of this pen. This one is is got very interesting uh different uh resin there uh with chatoyant you've got brown you've got blue you've got a bit of purple so very very nice very nice pen from vazir again um nice nib with the chess uh, piece on on at yowo nib it's a medium it's a um it's a um cartridge converter of course there you have it, uh, a Schmidt uh, quality product from Vizier again. Take a look at them. I think they may, I don't know if they're still sold out, but again, I would recommend the Meteor Shower. Very fine resin, just another version of the other green and black version that I've already reviewed. So a shout out to Vizier Pence. Thank you for watching that. Next, what do we have? Oh, yes. I, I added this to my collection. I realized I didn't have an Ongdian 1851. I may may review this pen actually, uh, just because I think it's a got an interesting nib that I really want to try out. And I'm not even sure if that nib is gold. So I got to check it out. But here you are. Take a look at this pen, folks. I think it's a gorgeous pen. Again, this guillache motif. And one of my viewers, and uh, I don't want to get the name of her uh, YouTube reference wrong. Uh, let me just go back. I think it's at Tor Thorilda. Yeah, she's she's always got some very or he or uh, I'm not going to uh, comment because I just see a picture. And I, you know, sometimes pictures don't tell, uh, you know, necessarily uh, give you the the whether it's a female or a male, uh, but at Thorilda mentioned that this guillotine motifs on pens is becoming more and more a trend, and I tend to agree uh, with that uh, uh, viewer. I thought that this pen is really interesting. So it's on the thinnish side. It's got a number five size nib, but a really nice nib. Uh, so I'm looking forward to using this this pen. It appears to post very nicely. I'm going to give it a, a, a more detailed review. Um, so uh, very nice. It's another addition. Ongdian is not coming out with many pens these days. So um, I figured I'd go to a pen that I haven't had the chance to, to review and have in my collection. Now, what else have I got for you in terms of what I received? One second. Oh, yes. Another pen. Since, you know, there's not many Chinese pens that are coming out. Um, and uh, is this T5, Majon T5, 
that I also realized they did not have in my collection. Uh, I think this is a really, really nice pen. It kind of looks like the Sailor uh, Pro Gear. I'm going to take a closer, a closer look at this pen, dimensions, and all the rest of it. Uh, it is a piston filler with a beautiful Majon nib. Very, very nice uh, pen. So I think I'm going to be reviewing this this week and posting my review. So stay tuned for that. The Majon T5, I'll give you my thoughts, but it does appear to be another well welcome pen from Majon. Um, that, you know, it's a, another very interesting offering that I was worthy of mention. Now, in terms of let me just cut back. Upcoming videos. Well, upcoming videos, I've got uh, the Majon T5 that I think I'm going to do. Uh, remember last week I received the Gioia Capodimonte, so stay tuned for the review on that. That will be published sometime soon. I may do that on Dian 1851. And um, another review that I'm thinking about doing is a review with the eight pen questions. Uh, I'm thinking about it, uh, but I want to vary the questions. Uh, I don't like half of them, uh, and I don't know if, I, I'm type, if I'm allowed to call them the eight pen questions or if there's some kind of copyright on that these days, but it will be maybe my fountain pen journey, and or I'll call it whatever, whatever comes to mind, but I'm going to do kind of a variant on that, so stay tuned for that. Maybe one week when there's not much news to talk about and it's slow, it's a slow week, news week, as they say, maybe I'll, 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 I'll prepare a a a, um, a, uh, a longer video I give you some of my personal thoughts and then uh, maybe publish it when we have a slow news week okay so there you have that what else i'm looking at my ipad I'll be taking a look at uh, my notes here okay yeah i want to talk about a couple of things um nip swapping i know that last week i mentioned to you a couple of things so I'm going to go to my overhead camera again. And you'll recall that I swapped nibs with this Ranga. I ordered a Ranga Splendor with a number eight size Bach uh, unit, or it, it, in other words, the, the insert here is made such that it can accommodate a Bach unit. And what I realize is that the X159 number eight Jinao unit fits nicely into this pen. So that was a nip swap that I recommend. So rather than spend hundreds of dollars on a titanium Bach number eight size nib, um, you can take a cheap, really affordable X159 Jinao and a uh, number eight size nib and use the carcass, if you will, <laughs> um, of a Ranga pen that cost you maybe 70, I think it's $90 and nib swap and you, you come up with a really nice product. So I repeat that. The next thing is you remember, I took this big, this big, I think they call it the JD big metal pen. Um, and again, this is a controversial pen because it kind of, uh, is a knockoff on the Irushi, uh, but it's much, much heavier. And what I did is I pulled out Gary Green. I, I gave him a shout out, suggested that we pull out from there the complete nib unit um, and insert in there, and I've inserted a Jinao, a number eight size nib with the feed, pushed it in, you know, deeply, so you can tell that it's very deeply inside, which is unfortunate because you don't get to see, you know, the size of the nib like you do, for example, on this one. It's the same nib, but as you can tell, uh, you know, one is huge and the other one is really shoved in there, which is unfortunate, but that's the only way it would work. And what I did is I filled the chamber here, the barrel, I dropped it with ink, okay, and um, filled the pen. It kind of initially burped on me a little bit. So when I went to write with it, it kind of spilled some ink. What I realized 
that may be the cause of that is some of the air that was trapped in the in the barrel because I I am eye dropping it may have caused that. Since then, I noticed that there was some bleeding around, some leakage, and I wasn't sure whether the leakage came from the 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 feed uh, or or around the feed or whether it came from the uh, the, the, the mechanism here where you screw in and out and maybe there was a leakage there. Uh, what I realized is that I did not put any silicone around um, the screwing uh, section. I did now and um, uh, it, it appears to, the leakage appears to be controlled. So this is a an experiment that's still in the making. But uh, so far, I eye dropped this barrel without putting any silicone. Uh, Gary Green suggested you put these big silicone um, plastic inserts that kind of, I think it, you could use for your ears or something like that and um, put them in there and uh, so that there's no leakage, but I don't see any leakage. So yes, I eye dropped a, a metal pen and that may in the end uh, you know, might see some deterioration, but I don't really care because this is a very inexpensive pen and I did want to try it out. So what I propose is that we take a look at the, how this pen writes in a second with my onion skin journal, but I've got two other nip swapping suggestions for you. This is my V, Asvine V200, which by the way, so far, this may very well be the Chinese pen of the year. Unless anybody comes up with something better, so far this is going to take the, uh, it's, it's in the lead, put it, put, it, put it this way. If we have standings that are ongoing, well, this v Asvine V200 is attracting a lot of, lot of attention. What I've done, and silly me, I don't know why it took me so long to figure it out, is given that this is a titanium, uh, a titanium pen. I figured I put in my. I have a that is a Bach titanium number six. Uh, I think it's broad, or yeah, it's a broad nib, and it works beautifully. I have an Asvine feed, so I don't have the Bach feed. Obviously, if you chose this pen with the Bach feed, it's even easier. You can order the titanium nib. Uh, with the box section and you just have to screw it in. But in case you ordered with the Asvine, it does work. Uh, I simply, you know, removed the, the feed uh, from that setting and added the nib and it works really nicely. So we'll do a writing sample uh, in a few seconds. By the way, this pen has just been transformed now. So you're getting a really, really nice writer uh, for with an inexpensive Chinese pen. Shout out to um, to Mr. Shaq MD who figured out how to uh, maybe make this nib line up. What he does is he unscrews the clip section and moves it around so you can line up your clip to the nib if that's you absolutely want to do it. So, and he's got a little short video on that showing how he's done it. So shout out there. Um, so that's another nib swap that I recommend. The other nib swap that I did is on this Opus 88 Bella, which I think is a gorgeous big pen. I put in again, another titanium uh, Bach stub here, which writes really, really nicely. So there you have it. That's Those are two um, nib nib swaps that I re recommend. In other words, you get some quality writing um, experiences with titanium nibs that kind of are in between steel and uh, steel and, um, and gold without the price tag of gold nibs, but you've got the f flexibility or the springy and smooth, um, uh, soft feel of that titanium of those titanium nibs. So if you're into that, you spend a little bit less money uh, and go with a pen that's not too, too expensive like this one or the Asvine or even the Ranga 
and you can really get some very interesting uh, pens uh, put together which gives wonderful writing experiences and they be, suddenly take on a really different level of pen. So let's take a look at some of these writing samples just very quickly and it gives me an opportunity to kind of test this um, uh, onion skin paper. Oh, nice card. Thank you. I didn't notice that was in. It, there's th this template that comes with it. Gives you the lines or a dotted, um, dotted version. And it's thick. So that works really nicely. So let me see how this... Very curious to see how this... Uh, how this uh, journal will write. Let's I'll show you how juicy this uh, Jinao nib is with this pen. So this is the uh, big metal pen. Um, in the red. Rushi inspired, if you will. And the nib on this pen is the X159 Jinhao number eight size nib. Ah, you see, it burped. So I'm glad I got that so I can show you that it just burped there on me. So it's still an experiment. So it's a work in progress. Uh, look, it's leaking. So that's where the leakage comes from. It's not coming from the section here it is coming from that nib so again is it because there's air trapped in the eye dropping section here or just because there's just leakage don't know so so far it works but i'm not fully satisfied with that i don't like the fact that look at this it's leaking all over the place so that experiment may quickly come to an end i guess it didn't work for me anyway Next, before I make a mess, I did want to show you how this pen, let me just see if I could come closer. Yeah. Um, this is the Asvine. Look at that. Look how beautiful. I love this paper. This is the Asvine V200. And it's got... a Bach titanium number six broad. I've got to tell you on this paper, uh, let me just adjust my camera because it's not focusing the way I want it to. Uh, okay, here we go. Um, yeah, yeah, it's it it comes down really thick, really thick. The line is my. I mean, this broad is a broad, but it's coming down like a triple broad, but very smooth. I got to tell you, very smooth, almost as smooth as Tomio River. It gives you that same sensation. Um, so this might be uh, a journal to use with a fine nib. In fact, do I have a fine nib not too far away? Just bear with me a second. I may have one. One second, I will be right back. Okay, the beauty, the beauty of a live show <laughs> that's not live but recorded. Yeah, 
this is one of my favorite pens these days this is the the Majon P138 I think it is with a fine nib so let's just take a look at how this one yeah you see all of a sudden this Majon P I think it's 138 or 139 I forget now no it's the 138 the 139 is the one that's going to come out so it's the 138 this is a really fine nib on normal or paper I use is Tomio River at work for my journal but in on this paper it's writing like a medium-sized nib so that's a great experience I mean here you have paper that because of the way it's it's built its inherent characteristics actually turn your nibs probably one or two sizes thicker i mean this fine nib is definitely a medium so very interesting uh, i may order a couple more of these ink journals um, my big metal pen with that uh, jinao number eight size nib looks like a broad my asvine nib with the broad nib or asvine pen with the broad nib looks like a double broad and my Majon fine nib looks like a medium so very very nice i love this journal congratulations to to the onion skin journal available on etsy a little expensive because of the transportation but worth every penny in my in my estimation so that's very very nice so that's that for the journal i have um, a couple of things to show you so let me just clean up here and i will be right back okay we're back now you'll remember that for those of you who had the patience to take a look at my video on uh, grail pen journey part number one i go through various steps that i think you one can go through when it comes to grail pens and one of the final steps is to either buy the exit pen which is your final gray pen never to look back so to speak or you have an exit plan and i chose the exit plan which is a plan that doesn't involve buying another grail pen but following dr brown's advice to enjoy the pens that you do have in your collection so what i've decided is that for the next several weeks i mean i have hundreds of pens okay i think it's 400 plus so obviously i've forgotten or i've not paid attention to a lot of pens in my collection so every week what i promise is that during my recap i will pull out three pens forgotten pens that i've not used in a while and resurrect them if you will and put them in my daily or my weekly uh, circulation and use them for the week and last week you remember i had three pens and i try to get a pen from an inexpensive range one medium priced and a third one more expensive uh, range if you will so we get a little bit of everything and here you see the Jinao x450 i mean this is just four i think i probably have many other colors but i've forgotten about this pen which is an absolute it's a really really nice pen well done well manufactured snap on it's got that kind of section where you could put your fingers a little bit like lamy where the lamy safari where they tell you where to put your fingers and how to hold the pen uh, very nice very comfortable except i replaced the nib instead of having a Jinao nib i had replaced this nib with a pen bbs calligraphy one nib in fact i had showed you this nib for those of you who saw it during my grail pen part two alternatives uh, how to make a Jinao, a cheap Jinao, into a pen that's a little more interesting with this calligraphy nib so there you have it and we'll do a writing sample in a second so the Jinao X450 I'm resurrecting. Uh, medium sized is this italics 
Churchman's Prescriptor. I've got it both in the black and in the burgundy. What a beautiful pen. Yes, it's a metal pen, but what's really nice about this pen is the nibs that Italics used to make. And I think they're out of business because when I click on their Mr. Pens UK, it doesn't appear to go anywhere anymore. So I guess they shut down. But I have many, many um, italic nibs. And I'll show you in a second what these italic nibs, if you can get your hands on them, really, really nice. I've got a, a two stub pens that I want to show you in a second. So that's that. The other pen, which is a little more expensive, is this Penlux Masterpiece Grande. This pen has a Yowo nib, branded Penlux. Probably has the smoothest Yowo nib in my collection. Very well tuned. I really like this green kind of translucent resin or acrylic with red rose or rose goldish coloring on the trimming very nice so let's take a look at these pens and see what gives so again i love this onion skin journal so this is the pen lux yeah much thicker pen lux masterpiece grande with a nib that is a Jinhao, uh, Jinhao, sorry, Yowo, number six, steel, stub, 1.1. Very, very nice. Now, when you compare the same pen on, I mean, let me just put that side to side, you can see this is the Tomo River paper, and this is the paper, the onion skin. So you could see that the onion skin is much thicker. With this ink, this I think is Montblanc Irish Green. There is a tendency to perhaps see a little bit of feathering there that I don't see in the Tomo River. And Tomo River gives me a really much finer line. Let's see what the uh, other pens do, and we'll compare as well. Let's do let's look at the italics. This is the italics Churchman's prescriptor. And this has the nib is an italics medium cursive. italic stub very nice but as you can compare much thicker here than it is on the Toma River but I don't see any not with this ink and I think this is um, I think this is probably just diamine red uh, an ordinary red color so I don't see the I don't see the um, the feathering Let's take a look at this Jinao. Yeah, much thicker. This is the Jinao X450 with a pen BBS uh, calligraphy. A number one nib. Again, uh, Tomo River, and here is my um, onion skin journal. It's drying up slowly. I see that on my gin, uh, I, in my Tomo River, you could definitely see the red sheen come out of this ink, which, by the way, is the Majon blue ink that I spoke to you about last week. But slowly as this dries, I'm starting to see the same red sheen but a much thicker line, much thicker line. Still very interesting, very, very interesting. So there are my three resurrected pens. 
writing sample on this onion skin journal which i really think i'm going to enjoy just going to use finer nibs on this journal and uh, there you have it that's that portion of my of my review um and my recap now i'd like to conclude with a section and i will be right back okay okay so we're back and what i'd like to show you is again my viewer i mentioned about mentioned this viewer earlier described as at thorilda mentioned to me that there was this interesting article uh, a bbc article uh, written by a mr sutik biswas an indian correspondent entitled how indians artisanal fountain pens are making their marks and i thought that this you know i share uh, many indian pens on this channel that i think are worthy of mention and he kind of goes through the major major players or the major uh, pen pen makers in india uh, he starts off with a little story about phosphor and i will show you one of my, the pens that i have in a minute he goes through lotus uh, he mentions aca he mentions ranga of course and he a very interesting article about how indian pens are making their mark and i think more and more you see some very interesting pen makers and they all you know all handmade they all work very hard reasonably priced so shout out to indian pen makers um, and i wanted to uh, mention this article i i told her i told the viewer at Torilda that i would and there you have it thank you very much for pointing out this article very very interesting i also at the same time want to show you this other youtube reviewer by the name of inked happiness if you saw the um last live show i think is the last one maybe the previous one from mr Hemingway jones he mentioned him he's one of my favorite he's a i subscribe to his channel he obviously uh makes it a point to go through and promote indian pen makers and recently at a recent pen show he he does episodes with a lot of the pen makers including del moon uh, including ASA, including Ranga, uh, etc., etc. So, shout out to Inked Happiness. Uh, very interesting. So, if you want to know anything about Indian pens and more, take a look at uh, Inked Happiness. Very, very interesting uh, channel. And uh, thank you very much for providing us, to us a, a very different outlook. And you've got some Indian pens that I think are really worthy of mention. And speaking of Indian pens, why don't we take a look at my collection of Indian pens? Um, first of all, you have here, these last three are my three last Lotus pens. Uh, I've uh, reviewed the Arthur. I've reviewed the Wave. The This is the Citrus Splash to come. But, I mean, take a look at this pen, folks. I mean really and this wave that i recently reviewed such an elegant elegant pen and how the light uh, you know shines across that kind of guilloche wavy um ebonite very very nice and this citrus splash i gotta tell you we'll get the re detailed review is also very nice then of course you got magna the the only two magna pens that i own are these two uh, and this one here, especially with that big, juicy number eight, but it's a giant number eight size nib. It's almost like number nine. Very, very big, almost as big as the the Pelican, I would say, on the M1000. This is Phosphor. Makes handmade pens really, really nice. You can choose your your resin. This It takes a long time to get you the pen because he, you know he's a one-man show and he does it all very artisanally i have a uh, yowo gold nib on this pen very very nice but thick 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 resin or thick ebonite in this case uh, very nice so there you have it that's phosphor 
And then, of course, you've got very inexpensive but very nice. And by the way, I should add one more pen there. That is Vazir. And I would add to that this recent Vazir that I got that is another Meteor shower. So you've got various range of pens. Very nice. Uh, very nicely made. Nothing fancy in this the pure acrylic with a very nice nib. Take a look at that nib. I mean, that nib is just a very or, uh, ordained nib. Very, very, very elaborate. Very, very nice. So that's Vazir. What have I got in my second layer here? Well, these are my Ranga pens. This is most of my Ranga uh, pens. I would have to add, of course, my other, my additional Splendor here. Uh, these are the huge size pens. And then you've got all the, the models from Ranga. And I love this Abbey Manu Grande, um, you know, uh, feel. Very, very nice. I've got it in both acrylic and, it, you know, Ranga does acrylic and um, uh, ebonite, premium ebonite and, and cheaper ebonite. So you've got all kinds of choices by, by Ranga. So there you have my Ranga pen collection. After that, I have a series of other... Uh, here are all my a ASA pens. I got to tell you, I, I've had some difficulty with ASA pens because they kind of... What they have is they have this very nice ebonite feeds but these ebonite feeds need to be worked at and they need to be heat set um, with you know different nibs i've tried the noodlers nibs on these i've tried the can write uh, and they kind of have a tendency to leak um, and i know that as asa has got some very nice pens when i watch the ink happiness video but i don't know where to find them i look at their website it's not very functional yet they have a brand new website. It's, it's new because it's not like the old site. But I don't think they've got all their pens there yet. So that's one of the things I noticed that some of these Indian pen makers would be wise to hire a webmaster uh, uh, like, for example, Magna Carta is done. Or even Del Moon is a much better, and even Ranga, frankly. Uh, but some of the others are just lacking in... A really nice website that promotes their pens and that you know when you click you go quickly through it sometimes you lose patience because it takes so long for the pages to generate that you don't go through their their selections and their offerings so this is the ASA this is can write I've got different can write including a big giant pen and then you've got the heritage series so I've got this one which is my favorite can write pen with that uh, kind of flex nib or semi-flex nib, which really, really writes beautifully. Um, not the greatest quality pens, um, as some would want us to, uh, you know, to, 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 they're very critical of their quality, but those nibs can't be, can't be blamed. I mean, look at this thing, Emperor. I thought that this would have been beautiful, but you see, it's coming out. It's coming out. The whole section is coming out because that hasn't been glued down properly and these are the type of problems that discourage people into you know from buying can write pens this is normally would have been a very nice pen but because of that defect when i pop it open the section comes out it, it probably just requires it to be properly set or glued but there you have it but can't fault their nibs so there's a shout out to indian pen manufacturers um, there is also, I got to mention, there's also Del Moon, which has some very, very nice offerings. And I'm just going to put up on the screen their website page to show you. And I will also put it into their description. Very nice pen, Del Moon. I will be ordering one soon and featuring it on this channel. But I thought that I would give a shout out to Indian pen makers I think there's some interesting, interesting pens to be had from all of these pen makers. And I will uh, leave in my description their websites so you can take a closer look at them if you so wish. So there you have it, folks. This is this week's weekly recap. I hope you enjoyed that. I know it's long, but I've got timestamps as usual. Please subscribe, encourage the channel. I love you all. Take a look at 
my um, uh, interview by Hemingway Jones on his live show next Tuesday, April the 23rd. I believe it's probably 8 p.m. as usual. So see you then. Thank you very, very much. Grazie molto. Arrivederci.